name is Ellen. I'm with Slendrance Interiors. Today I am I'm doing a cute little dresser that I got a while ago. Um, it's probably, from judging from the look of it and how much I had to fix it, I'd say um, at least a hundred years old. It, it's just, it was not in good enough shape to <clears throat> restrain and refurbish, so I repainted it. Um, I spent probably 10 hours <laughs> fixing sanding, fixing, gluing, taking things apart, re-gluing them, just everything. So now it's a really sturdy little unit and when it's all put back together it'll be another hundred years before someone needs to do something really radical to it. But um, if you are with us today, thank you for joining me. I do um, interior decor as well as furniture upcycling and the reason I got into furniture upcycling was because I had some clients who had some old pieces and I had kind of dabbled in furniture painting and one day a lady asked me if I would um, paint, uh, what was it that I had to paint at first? I painted a dresser for her and that kind of snowballed into other people and other people and then it was a coffee table and all these different things. So. Now it's kind of funny because sometimes when I do in um, a decor consultation for someone, I'll mention that, you know, we can refurbish this piece you've had in your family for 80 years and they're all excited because I can redo it, make it look really nice. Whereas they might have just, you know, taken it to a restore and, and gotten rid of it or something. So today I'm going to do uh, something that I promised a while ago and I never actually got to it and it is to put on an IOD transfer. An IOD transfer, and I'm on my knees here, I'll be sitting on the floor most of the time today. This is an IOD transfer, they come in a tube, various sizes of tubes. This one is called Midnight Garden um, and it's a rub-on transfer. So a rub-on transfer is, a, it's like a piece of art basically. Um, that you rub onto the surface that you've painted. You can put it on glass, you can put it on mirrors. It's, they're really neat things. IOD stands for Iron Orchid Design. Um, there's Prima rub-on transfers. I think Prima and Iron Orchid are somehow related. I've never really figured that out. But if you ever order these, um, you can get them from your local stockist. I got this one from the Stockist in Salmon Arm. They have a shop called Remarket and I get my um, a rub-on transfers from them. They're kind of hard to find. You can find them on Etsy. You can find some on Amazon, although they don't usually have the latest iron-on designs. Hi there. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have friends that you think might like painting or, um, or just even want to watch, I used to watch these types of videos when I was cooking or whatever, and I would just kind of glance at them as I'm doing my thing. So. I still do that. I still find them very relaxing to watch and I watch um, painters probably every day a couple of videos at least just to see what techniques they're doing, what's new in the market and that sort of thing. I want to show you this piece and I'm going to be on the floor all the time we're doing this. So I'm hoping it goes a little bit faster than not. I'm not going to do any painting. I'll show you what I have done for painting. And then I will um, get to doing this transfer and I'll put the whole transfer on. So if you want to hang out for that, fine. If not, you can just click off and watch it later or whatever. But do share our videos. Um, I will have this video up on YouTube within a couple of days. It takes me about an hour and a half to redo those things, believe it or not. Um, and I'll have this one up and it'll be under the new playlist and also under Antique uh, Midnight Garden Dresser, I'm calling this one. So wait till you see the colors. Now, I'm going to turn this camera so you can see the colors. And this is, it doesn't show as dark as it really is. What I wanted to do with this piece was I wanted to make it really moody, like, um, like a midnight sky. So this transfer, because this transfer is so exotic, and you'll see it in a minute, um, I really wanted the paint to be really a beautiful dark. Uh, so what I've done, this is sanded now with my buffing pad. So it's actually taken a bit of the darkness down. This is how it will look when it's all done and it's, and it's resealed. But what I've done is I wanted it to be imperfect looking here. So if you see the legs here, um, the legs are kind of imperfect looking. There's black. Um, blue and a little bit of green in this mix. So what I've used is um, I've used coal black. You can see a little bit of the coal black in here as well. 
I've used Midnight Blue and a little bit of the color like Seaside, which are fusion mineral paint colors. Um, and I also have in this one of the Dixie Belle paint colors called Antebellum Blue. So I've just mixed them all in and it sort of looks like a moody night sky look. And that was the look I was going for because when you see this, uh, when you see this transfer we're putting on, it'll make total sense. Um, this here, I have the little keyhole things for there. I'm not going to use these knobs. I just put them on to be able to pull these drawers out. Um, every one of these drawers was broken or didn't have the runners. There's a few things I still have to do, but I mean, they were just a mess, a total, total mess. I probably spent two and a half, three hours sanding this piece. I'm not kidding you. And five layers of, um, paint stripper to the top and this part I left really rustic looking I'm going to stain it one more coat and then the top is just a really pretty oak and it will also get one more coat of paint uh, no stain the back has a mirror it is the coolest mirror but the mirror is missing right now because I'm getting a new mirror cut for it the old beveled mirror that was in it was just a wreck um, this had to be taken apart re-glued reclamped everything i mean this is probably one piece that i have worked the absolute most on and it was a horrible horrible mess to start with so i'm trying to get my camera low enough here because i want to start on this transfer with you and i want you to really be able to see it well so i think we'll get a dead on shot of it kind of thing so let's put that there so with these transfers um hi thanks for joining um, with these transfers, they come in a tube, and I'm going to close these drawers because I know that we'll need, these are a little bit sticky, so I have to wax the drawers. I'm going to get down on my, my little cushion I've got here because I'll be on my butt the whole time. Um, so with these transfers, they come in a tube like this. They also come with a little spatula that you use for the actual rubbing on. This is the spatula that they use. Um, so you can keep those and use them multiple times if you want. Uh, this is called Midnight Garden, and I can't unroll it all right now, but that's just part of it. And it's going to go against this blue, this dark blue, moody looking um, paint, which again is coal black, seaside uh what else did i use midnight blue and a little bit of dixie bells antebellum blue in here um so with these i have to do a little tiny bit of prep before we get going with this now i want to take these knobs back off just in case the transfer goes up that high i don't think it does but we shall see so i'm gonna take those off because i don't want to run into that um, you need some tape. I'll show you why in a minute. You need a cutter. So this is just to cut it and score it where the drawers are. Um, I use screwdrivers like this to open up my drawers once I get them without knobs on them. It's very handy to open the drawers like that. And you need, after you've painted it, you need a buffing pad. And all you do with the buffing pad, this is kind of a worn out 220 buffing pad, but so just take it. It's going to lighten up your paint color just a bit. But you can really see the moodiness in the paint here now. And I wanted it, again, like I said, I really wanted it to look like a, a midnight sky or a stormy night sky because the um, transfer is called midnight garden and I wanted it to have a really dark surface to go against instead of a white surface. I've seen these done on white surfaces and they're very pretty too though. But it is a moody looking uh, moody looking transfer. So then you just take a cloth, a dry cloth, and just wipe off any dust. You don't want any dust under your transfer because it won't stick as quite as well. And put the drawers back in tight. I'm going to sand this middle bar here to see if it all matches. Uh, I might give it a swirl through here. And a swipe through here. I'm not going to do the very, very bottom of this piece. I'm going to leave it the dark bluish black that it is. 
I've already sanded these middle drawers. Okay, so I didn't sand the legs. Um, these, these bars that are the legs, I didn't sand those because I want them to stay very dark. And the transfer is going to go right on the um, drawers themselves. So what you do is you get a couple pieces of tape ready. And this is just to hold the transfer in place once you get it to where you want it on your drawer. So I just, I just stick tape on my hand and I have it. Um, get at least four pieces of tape. Okay. Now, we're going to eyeball this because it is a big transfer. And when you do a large transfer, you have to be ever, ever, ever so careful that you do not touch the back of the transfer. It's, it's basically a clear picture with a glue tacky back but it has a white paper behind it and the white paper is so that you can handle it. So you wanna take it and you wanna see where you want to start it. So you know what, this might go right down to the bottom, maybe. I kinda of want it to be in the middle, so I'm sort of eyeballing it here. Um, I'm gonna tape it there and then I'm gonna see Whereabouts it hits in the middle down here. So let's just tape it there. And the reason I'm taping it is because if I don't, the back's gonna fall off and then as soon as I touch it. Do you see what I mean about handling a big transfer? They're not easy. <laughs> Some people take the drawers out and do them kind of sitting down, but um, I'm just gonna do it this way. So you don't wanna touch the back. Keep your hand off the off the clear plastic coating. Let's see if we can get this to stay. And this is like the trickiest part. Whoop! Do you see that fell back? So now if I touch this here, it's gonna stick. I don't want it to do that. So we'll go back up. I'm just trying to see where this thing is gonna lay out. So I think we're good. I, I thought it might go right off the deep end at the bottom here, but I don't think it will. So that's, that's good. Okay, so I know where I want it. I'm gonna take this back off and I'm gonna drop this white piece now. So if I touch it or if it touches itself now, it's gonna get wrecked. So I very carefully, I'm going to see where I want it and say your prayers because this is where it's going to end up. So now that I'm pushing on it, anything I touch is sticking to the paint, just like that. And I'm gonna go, this has a curved drawer, so I have to make sure the curves are covered first. And I got nothing sticking to itself. Very tricky with a curved drawer too, so let's see here. What I'm going to do is take my last piece of tape and just tack it to the bottom here. Okay, so I want you to see what this looks like. Right, so I have just tacked it with tape up there. I want to cut it here first because this drawer, the top is a curved, um, they're called a serpentine drawer where they curve. So I want to cut it in this ledge here so that I can get right into that serpentine drawer and then the rest will drop down and we'll rub it from there. Okay, so you see what it's like. You see how kind of tricky that was. I'm gonna back up a little bit, okay? And if anybody has any problems seeing it, please let me know. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, one more or two more pieces of tape and I'm gonna tape the sides here because I don't want anything to fall down once I um, cut this where the serpentine drawer is. So you basically put it right over top of your drawer and then you cut where your drawers join. That's how you get a nice, perfect picture every time. If you try to cut it and sort of measure it out and all that sort of stuff, I suppose you could. It's got the little grid lines to do that, but I think it's kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll do it this way. Okay, 
So I'm gonna take my, like I said, I'm on the floor all day doing this now. So I've just left it back there so you can see what I'm doing. What I wanna do is I wanna take my knife, make sure it's really sharp and cut right across. And as long as you leave your knife in there, it's gonna find that groove. And now it's going across the post, so I have to just carry it through across the post. And then we're gonna go this way, I think. Right here. I'm trying to find my way around here. It's like it's like cutting a thing in the dark. You can't really see where you're at. You can just sort of feel it. Okay. Where are we at here? It's a little tricky at first, but once you get your sections cut and you know what you're doing, it goes pretty fast after that. And if you have seen my um, last video where I did the um, the old uh, Duncan Fife buffet, you'll see that we applied the transfer in much the same way there too. This piece here is right where that bar is. Okay, so I really want this to stick down. So I'm going to just rub it with my fingers. Wherever I rub it, it's gonna tack itself to the drawer. Now, there is a little issue here. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna cut this under here. This has a, a, a drawer that juts out. It's really kind of a weird design. So, so it's gone under there, but I wanna cover in here too, I think. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this part. So I'm just cutting it out where it wants to go for now, right along the line that it has with the wood of the drawer. And cut that a little bit. Oh, come on. Do what you're supposed to do. Okay, so it wants to go over here. This is where things get kind of a little dicey. So I'm not going to touch that after that. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to put this back on the white backing so that I can deal with it after. So I'm just going to put it back on here. And then I'll figure out exactly where I want that afterwards. I probably should have moved the whole thing down, I guess. But now I'm going to just um, see if I can straighten this bit out a tiny little bit. So I'm not going to... This has a bubble here. You can see the bubble, but I'm not going to worry about that right at the moment. I'm going to deal with that as we get to it. So what we're going to do is start rubbing. So all I'm going to do is you just take the spatula and you just start rubbing. And it takes a little bit of time. So if it's very boring to you, you can log off. But these are really, really pretty. When you do this, it doesn't wreck the paint. It doesn't do anything harmful. Um, you just go over the whole bit. And then what it does is the transfer sticks to the paint or, you, or the glass or the raw wood. You can do these right on raw wood, actually. They're really neat. Um, and then when you peel this, this plastic off, all you see is the actual picture. So they're like a painted piece, really. They're, they're very artistic. They're just beautiful. There's so many of these IOD transfers that are in different colors different styles, different florals, different greeneries. I mean, it's really pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna go across the whole thing first. So let me know if you can see. It's a beautiful picture and I love, I love all the darkness and the richness to these, uh, this picture called Midnight Garden. That's what the IOD transfer is. Um, and that's why I decided to paint this piece kind of a, a very dark, moody, black and blue uh, color. The sides of it are even darker, so it's, I'll show you those after if I remember. Okay, I'm going to go up here. So I know there's a bar there, so I'm going to cut this right down where the natural cut is. 
and we're going to take this piece off, hopefully. If all goes well, <laughs> it should come off. So when you're taking these off, um, you, you start at one end and you'll start to peel them back. And if you peel them back and you notice it, it's leaving a little piece there, here and there, just put it back down just like I'm doing now and re restick it. So this part's not going down, so I have to just restick it. And that's how you rub it on. That's why they call them rub on transfers. It's pretty neat, really. So I'm gonna try that now. Okay, so this bottom one needs more. So initially you just, you know, give it a good rub all over where you're, where you're going to be putting it and then you start pulling it off. And every spot that you pull off and you see a bit of it sticking to this paper still, you just lay it back down and give it another little rub and it'll come right off. So these aren't hard to do. The, the hardest part is getting them on the piece without, so you see that now? So that is on the piece and you just take your finger or a cloth and you rub it down and you cannot tell that that wasn't hand painted on there. So we're gonna go to this next bit. It's really, and you know, if you are a furniture um, upcycler like I am, it's one of my, one of my day jobs, <laughs> uh, you can demand a higher price for these because they're so intricate and so beautiful and so unique. Like painting them uniquely is one thing, but then adding this little extra pop of uh, uniqueness to them, just you can demand a little bit of a higher price than anybody selling like a plain old blue dresser kind of thing. Okay, so this one is really a bit tricky. <laughs> Might be a little bit cold out here too. I'm in my garage workshop. It's not been warm out here, I have to say. But I did have the heater on all morning. Okay, let's see. So what I'm doing is I'm watching here to see as I pull back very slightly, I can see where it's not sticking and I just rub it down a little bit more. And you just very, very carefully do this because if you miss, it's pretty hard to pack it back down where you need to and go at it again. So I'm just gonna do this for a minute and stop talking and you guys can watch. I'm gonna move this a bit closer. getting there slowly you have to go slow not pretty just so beautiful now there's my keyhole there that's okay when I put my gold keyhole um, thing over top it'll look really pretty I might be doing my keyhole things black I'm really not sure so go to this butterfly I haven't decided exactly what color to do the um, the knobs and handles on this because I want to see what this all looks like first. I'm sort of leaning towards spraying them silver with a little bit of um, black um, detailing on the knobs. And I will be getting nicer knobs for the top drawers. The bottom drawers, um, 
have a really nice antique handle, so I'll be putting those back on. Okay. And that is just give it's like the very last inch. Oh, there. Isn't that pretty? What do you guys think? Let me know what you think of that. So now you know why I wanted this moody blue night sky look for that. So let's carry on to this side and I will move you all down to there. Hopefully you can see pretty well there. Okay, so same thing. I'm just gonna start on this post. You do have to rub a little bit hard. I mean, it's it's not gonna come off from just, you know, mamby pamby going over it. You have to actually really rub into it because it is. I find the, um, I, I have used the older uh, IUD, sorry, IOD, not IUD, talking women's health here. Um, the older IOD transfers, Iron Orchid Design transfers, and they were super sticky on the back. Um, these ones don't seem to be quite as bad. I mean, they're still hard to get off, but, but they're worth it. They're really worth it. And this one, uh, I'm in Canada, and this one was, from my stockist, I think $39. And, um, and I had her ship it to me because I just cut that there. Because I don't live near her, so. Okay, that's that over that bar. And this has got to be trimmed here, too. Just where the drawers meet, you just have to trim it. Okay, I'll do this. Look, see, you don't want to do that either. <laughs> I was rubbing it so hard that it crumpled underneath, so I'm hoping it doesn't wreck the flower. Just have to be a little bit careful. But do apply pressure to these because I think it's the heat that probably activates the glue underneath from the rubbing. I'm not really sure. I'm just guessing. So it's Christmas in two weeks, and I have not really done much. <laughs> so after I do this all today, I've got to get out and do some Christmas shopping, and I don't have my tree up, and we have people coming for Christmas Day, and I don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> so I have a lot of stuff going on I have to figure out for. Christmas, but I'm hoping everybody has a really good Christmas. This will be the last video I do of this year. And I started doing these videos, I think in May. I can't remember really. Um, just because I found a lot of people really lost on furniture upcycling. So I started doing a lot of painting videos. They're all on our YouTube site uh, at Flandrance Interiors. And if you want to see live videos, you can go to our Facebook page at Flandrance and Tears and you can um, follow us, hit like and follow. And then when we have these live videos, you'll see them. Okay. This is a big, I guess it's a peony or something. I just love the flowers on this thing, really pretty. And that's got some little ivy leaves here. Very pretty. So once you get that first rub all over, then you go back and start to take it off and you just, I'm going to peel it off from this side this time so you can see this a little bit better here. Move you in a little bit closer. So I'll peel it off from this side so um, you can see it a little bit better. Put that tape up there. I'm pulling it back and you can see right there it's coming back and I, I don't want it to. You see as soon as I I rub it back down it becomes hollow in the back. 
so the picture goes away. This, you can see the picture, so I need to rub it back down. And then once I've got that, it goes hollow or see-through in the back. You see that? The leaf is gone. So that's, as you go along with every little bit you're doing, so you can see it going clear. I know that those bits have gone down and they've applied and these ones haven't, so I have to keep rubbing. And there again, it's starting to stick. So that's how you do it. You just keep going bit by bit by bit until it turns completely see-through in the back. There's a little bit there. And you want every little bit of it. Don't leave any little tiny, even the tiniest little step. <laughs> I never leave. So that's what it looks like. You see that there? When the picture's applied, it's see-through. the effort I think and for the cost of it I mean if you went into a store and tried to buy a really nice piece of artwork for your bedroom you'd be paying more than $39 I think for sure it is a little sore on the shoulder <laughs> so you know if you have I had once one of these and I had my my daughter come and help and my friend because my shoulder was a little bit sore at the time and I couldn't do it myself, so they came and rubbed, rubbed the picture on. So now it's heated up. It's coming off pretty fast. And whoop, there it is. Okay. That's the first couple of drawers. What do you think, guys? It's gonna be pretty nice, I think. This is the other side here. Put that back down. So now I have to figure out the bottom because I have this little strip here and it goes here. So I can use it if I want. I don't know if I want. Yes, probably I do. Do I? Hmm. I don't know if I want to use this piece or not. I guess it goes right there. Like that. Well, why not? We'll only take a minute to put it on. I kind of want it to all stay together with the rest of the picture. So I guess that would be how it goes. So I'm going to try and rub this on. You don't have to put this on your um, crossbars. And it's kind of a tricky piece, this one, because this shelf juts out. It's got about a three inch jut out on the bottom here. So I'm just going to put on what I can here. I'm imagining it's not going to stick too well, but what I can get on, I will. And then the rest, I'm not sure what I'll do with. <laughs> keep it kind of cohesive because you can see where it drops back here. Put that there. And that's kind of part of the planning of these and I actually didn't think of the planning of this this crossbar here and this jet out very well but I'll try and get in as much as I can. See if we can rescue it. So tell me if you've ever done these before and what you think of them and how hard you think they are. I kind of think they're pretty neat, <laughs> but they are a little bit of work, I have to say. Oops, 
Okay, so I think I'm getting most of it in there and that's coming off kind of a little bit flimsy. But what you do is you just take your um, finger after, I'll show you, and very gently press it down as much as you possibly can into your wood. Okay, so that's about all I'm gonna get out of there. So it's sitting here really flimsy, right? I don't know if you can see that very well. So what I'm gonna do is just take my finger and press it in very, very firmly and press anything I need to under. Um, this piece here is just hanging here. So I'm gonna press this in, press all of this in. What I do after this is all done is I take my, my buffing pad, um, which is one of these, and this one is fairly new. This one is fairly old. This one's like a, I don't know, 400 or something. It's really old and it's very fine. This one's more coarse. You don't want to use a coarse one. You want to use really fine. And you just take it and you just buff it. That presses it in. But it also buffs every little edge deep into the pores of the wood so that you don't have to worry about it coming off. And then once you've done all that, you can seal it with wax or a top coat or whatever you use. So now, see here, you can't even tell that that's separate. So it's pretty good. So now my little dilemma is, and this is why lives are good, because... This is the truth of things, right? When you see these done, you're like, oh my goodness, they're beautiful, but they can be pure hell to put on sometimes. <laughs> um, if you're not wanting to do a, a big piece and you're afraid to do it, I would just say go slow, cut everything into sections and do sections at a time. That's the only really advice I have for you. So this here, I am going to flatten this a little bit under here and I'm going to cut it again just like I did on the other side as much as I can in here. Okay, so I just cut this side and I need to match up this green stem here. So that's that and I'm going to press it in here. And we're going to, did you see that? Press it in here. This is just that random piece, just like the other side. And I'm going to oh, move it down so it matches. Matches, matches. And I'm just going to use my finger to get it started on the top here. Wherever you press your finger into it, it's going to kind of stick. Like I said, I find these uh, this new um, transfer, these new transfer backings are, are not quite as uber sticky as the other ones were. The other ones were like, you touch it and it stuck to you and ruined your thing, but this one is kind of nice. Okay, so I need my stick now and I'm gonna rub it in as much as I can everywhere. And try and get as much as I can on every bit of wood that I possibly can get it to stick to. Sometimes it's just a fingernail that does the trick. So that there I've done and it matches up perfectly. See that? Can you see that? I'll pull you in a little bit closer here. Um, sometimes it's hard with the camera to get a good shot of what I'm actually doing but Okay, so this is not sticking yet. So I'm gonna go along the rail of the wood first. And generally I use my finger on the little rails. And then I'm gonna take my stick and squish it into the rest of the rail. And I'm gonna push this here, this black bit down onto the bottom rail. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. And I'm gonna use my stick to get in here. Get all of this crushed right into the wood. And this I'm going to do with my fingernail. So you can see that there's pretty much nothing left except this little bit here now. Okay. Now, I'm going to peel that off 
is completely empty now, see? And it's completely attached and you would never know the difference. So what I meant by rail was these little wooden bits that go along with the um, drawer. These are at the bottom of the drawer. And press it in with your finger to get it nice and smooth. Take your um, buffing pad, you can just very gently buff it in. And what that does is it seals it down where it needs to be pressed down. And it just takes any loose bits and presses them into where you need it to go. So that's the first rail. So this is the beginning here. And that's the top drawer, top drawer, top drawer. That's And you would never know that this was separate. These, these were separate pieces that I had cut. But now it looks like all one application. So <clears throat> um, I'm going to go down to this bottom. And what I've got is a little bit of a bulge here. So I'm going to move my birdie down a bit. And hopefully none of it's attached. <laughs> so that's good. It, it's fine. I'm going to straighten this little thing out a little bit and press it, press it down like that. So it's nice and flat everywhere. Okay, so now that it's nice and flat and I've got it tacked with my tape in a few spots, um, what I want to do again is take this and I want to cut it where my drawer goes across. I'm going to cut it right where this drawer seam is. And just keep going, hopefully, sort of. And come this way and do it over here. These drawers are so tight in here. Okay, and then I've got this little dilemma here again of where the drawer is separate so this is where that rail is so I'm going to kind of mark it with my fingers and press it in just a bit to get it to stick in that rail and then I'm going to go down again and I'm going to find the bottom of the rail and I'm going to cut it exactly under the bottom of the rail so just slide your your cutting knife I just got this cutting knife at the dollar store. It was like two bucks. So they're really sharp blades. You don't need to go get an expensive X-Acto or anything like that. Now, because this thing is wanting to pop off and I don't have it taped down, um, I'm going to just stick a tiny bit of tape on each end for now. And it will hold it in place until we get to that part. So this is where we are. At. Um, I'm going to go back here so you can see again. Um, and somewhere or other I have put my, oh here it is, I found it. <laughs> so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to press outward. So we're going to start right in here and I'm going to go right up to the top of this, this um, dot here. And the reason I'm starting in the middle is so I can tack this middle down nice and tight. Just in case something decided to fall off. But at this point, it really shouldn't at all. So now we're getting into all the colorful, beautiful flowers. I think they're just gorgeous. Um, I think that some of these flowers are, what do they call those? Morning glories. If you guys know what kind of flowers these are. Um, this is a chrysanthemum that looks like a cosmos, uh, sunflower, sunflower, cosmos, pheasant, I think, no, peacock, and I think this is a morning glory, and this is ivy and black roses, it's just a beautiful piece, I can't say enough about how beautiful this is, um, the paint colors, I did a blended paint color, so I would put black <clears throat> along here, about that wide of a strip. I put another strip of navy blue, and then I would put black up here, 
and a little strip of navy blue and then in the middle I put uh, a color like seaside and then I've put another Dixie Belle color actually the other colors were fusion mineral paint the Dixie Belle was called antebellum blue and it's just a really different blue color so I blend those I blended those on each and every drawer and on each and every side rail on everything actually so it's a, a it created a really dark moody night sky blue color and um, because this is called midnight garden i wanted it to look like a real midnight garden not something you know not put on something that was super light i have seen these this very same midnight garden transfer on uh, a mirror and it looked really beautiful and i also saw it on um, a window you know how you can buy the window frames they did it on an old window frame that was so pretty because basically it turned out looking like a stained glass window. So, like I said, if you went to a store and tried to find a beautiful picture for $39, which is what this one cost, I think you'd be paying probably more than $39 for something like this. Plus, um, this is something you can do yourself and it's kind of unique to you. It's handcrafted, I guess, if you want to say. The picture isn't, but putting it on is. And it's just a really beautiful, beautiful picture. Okay, let's see if we can get some of this off. Uh, so there it's starting to stick. So I just have to really work at this. There's a lot of, a lot of coverage on this one to do. Let's see how fast it comes off or not. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking it might be a little bit of a pain to get off, but we should see. Just a bit up there. You don't want to miss, even if it looks like a tiny little bit, you don't want to miss it because it's probably the tail of a leaf or a stem or a beak snow, a bird's beak or a floral something, you know. So just make sure you get every little bit. I'm going to peek in here and this isn't coming off with the beans, so. Okay. Now it's coming, 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 coming. Oh, that's good. Oh, there it's sticking. So it wants to stick along the bottom. Uh, one other thing these transfers are really good for is, is um, covering up any flaws you might have in your, in your piece. That's something to keep in mind if you have a piece that has a really, you know, a flaw that you'd rather not be so noticeable. These transfers are really great, good for that. And they need to be put over um, dry paint. So this one I actually, I actually finished painting it two days ago. And I just let it dry for those 48 hours. And, um, kind of went from there but I, I knew that I wanted it to be very dry before I apply this because I don't I've never really tried it over you know four or five hour old paint but I'm imagining that it will not stick too well I don't know if you can hear the uh, machinery outside they're still working on this huge series of condos next door and there's about probably 80, maybe 75 units there. And they've been working on it now for over two years and I can hardly wait till they go away. Because every day I get to listen to heavy machinery. It's very noisy. missed any bits. I keep checking to see if I've missed any little tiny things. So we're good. So you can
can see where I pull it off here, this is coming up. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that means it's not stuck. Same thing with that. So put it down and just rub it again. Whoop. So once I get the mirror for this cut, the, the old mirror was in really bad shape. Um, it wasn't, I don't know how stuff got on the back of it, but um, it just had these old streaky, where the silver had come off, it looked like someone had poured a, some kind of acidic product on it, but I don't know how it could have gotten in there except Maybe it was stored in a barn or something at once. This piece has been completely detailed from top to bottom, inside and out. Um, when I do a piece, I give them a thorough cleaning inside and out. I vacuum them completely. Um, I usually sand as much as I can possibly sand and redo um, as far as you know the insides of drawers or the edges of drawers and things like that. I still have to put some um, shelving paper or what they call drawer liner in these drawers and, and decoupage that in because the drawers, I've sanded really well, but I still don't like how they look. I want it to be a really fresh, fresh looking piece when it's done. Kind of like, you know, fresh out of the factory. And I still have the sides of the drawers I'm going to give a little bit of paint to. Um, when, when I post these pictures, I'm going to post what this thing looked like when I first got it. And like I said, it probably should have gone in the junk heap, but um, I kind of looked, I mean, I really hummed and hawed about this one. I, I don't like to buy pieces that need so much work. But I love the old mirror on it, and I love the style of the dresser. These are not too uncommon, these styles, but the mirror I loved. Um, and this is like the top. This is just part of the frame of the mirror. So the actual mirror is, is really, it's got a beautiful frame, and once it's painted out and has a new mirror in it, it's going to be so pretty. So I took a chance, and I thought, you know... It's like when a person's sick, right? You want to kind of help heal them a little bit. <laughs> this is my way of fixing this old girl up. I always wonder where these pieces have been and who owned them and how excited they must have been when they got them brand new like this when they were younger. And, you know, the person who probably owned this originally is long gone, but we can keep this little part of them going for a while. So you can see here, it's really, oh, it came off, oh, it came off. <laughs> it's surprising me. There we go. You see how it pulls up and just leaves the picture behind. So here it's coming, there's a little bit here sticking out, so I have to rub it down and get rid of it. It's actually coming off quite nicely in places, and in other places not. <laughs> Just very slowly, inch by inch. You don't want to be, you do not want to be doing this in a hurry. So if you don't have the time to sit and do it, I would say wait until you do. So it takes a little bit of planning, a little bit of concentration, and a lot of muscle. Well, I don't know how many calories you burn doing this, but it must be something. I think. There's a little tiny bit here that I missed, so I'm just going to press that in and get rid of it in those few spots. I'm going to cut some of this off because it's sort of bulky rid of that. So I hope you're finding this uh, entertaining. Yes, what your wife does for a hobby. It's not really a hobby, <laughs> but yeah. 
Okay, let's carry on here. Um, but yeah, when I post the pictures of the before and after, you'll see what I mean about the drawers. Uh, I don't know how many hours I ended up sanding everything, but it was a long time. And um, just to get the, the worst of everything off of this piece, it was bad. The top took five go-rounds of um, paint stripper to get the top stripped down to wood. So that was a little bit unexpected. Usually I do two two rounds of paint stripper to get a top stripped off, but this one actually took five, so that'll give you an idea of all the gunk that was on it. I think we are at the end of this bit. I can't believe it. We're almost there. I gotta move this tape off now. And we'll do the last little bit of this one, and then this whole ridge is done. That was a lot of work, but doesn't that look pretty? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? You can leave a comment, let me know what you think. So beautiful. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And it feels so smooth. Like these, these transfers are just like uh, glass. They're just beautiful the way they, they feel after. So I'm just going to take my buffing pad. You don't have to use a buffing pad. You can use a... Um, cloth and I'm just what I'm doing is I'm not trying to buff it exactly I'm trying to press every little bit down because as you go along and you know you're pulling on that plastic you're, you're sometimes um, pulling this up a little bit too so you just want to press it completely into your your piece so that is a couple of layers and I, I'm happy that I went with the, the blended colors of black, blue, seaside, and antebellum blue because I wanted it to look like a dark um, midnight sky for this transfer called Midnight Garden. And I think that's kind of the effect has kind of worked. So now we're going to do this ridge again. And I want this to come up a tiny little bit if I can. Trying to match up, it's like a puzzle here, right? Matching up the pheasant. So I'm gonna match this peacock or whatever it is up and I'm gonna press this in. And that actually has almost come off already. So now that I've got that matched up, I'm gonna go along and gently move this right up onto that rail. I've got the drawer pushed in a little bit farther than it should go, um, but then I'm going to, I think, yeah, and then I'm going to um, have this, just the rail covered and, and not go higher than that. So we'll just get this top rail covered a little bit here. That's what I mean about planning. It, it takes a little bit of finessing to get it where you want it first. Okay, I think that's where I want it. I'm going to move this along. Take my finger and go along here first. Sometimes you just have to use your finger because there's just, it just doesn't work with that spatula in spots. That's okay, it only takes a second. It's really fast with your finger, actually. Might even be the heat from your finger makes it go fast, but I wouldn't want to use my finger on this whole darn thing, that's for sure. That would be a long process. Can you see very well there? Okay. So now we'll go in here and go into this crack. I think doing in between the drawer rails is really important, but it's probably one of the trickiest parts to do. But this whole thing, you know, like, that's what I mean. If you if you are going to do this, plan the time to do it because it just, you wouldn't want to stop partway through. And it does take a bit of 
thinking and planning and juggling things about to get it all right. Okay, so I think that part is done. Go over here to my finger now again. Um, I'm gonna try something, you know. No, doesn't work. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's keep looking at it. Okay, I think I've got this part all tacked down, except for right there. So I'm gonna pull this off and just trim this a little bit so it's not so bulky. And I'm just gonna cut it, I think. Okay, so that's pretty nice. You can see this, a little bit of a gap there but like I said this drawer when I put my drawer stoppers in at the end which is something else I have to put in yet um, it'll come right to here so there'll be nothing exposed there okay so I'm gonna carry on here you don't want to do this if you've just had a fresh uh, manicure <laughs> because it'll wreck your fingernails <laughs> another thing you don't want to do Anything, um, I have seen people actually put these on with a, like an old credit card or a, a store card. Um, I just don't know, I haven't done it myself, so I don't know how well it would press the thing down, if it's any more effective or not. I'll have to try it one day to see. But um, people do do that a little bit. Okay, we're almost there. I can feel the end coming. Oh, maybe not. Oh, lordy. Okay, that one's done. I'm going to press it down with my fingers first and then take my buffing pad and buff it in just to press everything in really nice and smooth. So, like I said, there's a little bit of a paint gap there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but when I get my, oh, that's the other thing is you have to remember where your drawer handles are. <laughs> so I'm just feeling for them right now. Uh, should be over here somewhere. Oh dear. We've lost ourselves. There it is. So the other one should be about here. Huh. Very interesting. Okay, there we go. Um, once I get the drawer stoppers in the back where I want the drawer to stop, I'll have it so that it stops right there. So there will be no, no gap in the thing. Okay, so let's go to the next. This is the bottom piece, the very last piece. And I think we'll start over here. Um, can you see that very well? Okay. So this, this part should be pretty straightforward. It looks like we're gonna go over top of another rail here, which is fine. So we shall, I'm just making sure everything's lined up properly and it looks like it is. So hopefully this one goes pretty fast. Thank you. 
buckle on me a little bit there. I'm going to take my, um, my little knife again and I'm going to cut this again because it is too long. And I'm going to cut right at this. Whoop! That's where my drawer keeps wanting to pop back. Have to get drawer stroppers in there. I can't even find my thing, which is great. Anyway, I'm going to go here and cut right along. This, uh, little cabinet had absolutely no um, nothing stopping the drawers from just going right through <laughs> uh, everything was knocked out of it and broken it was just awful so I've had to replace um, almost all of the back of it well actually I think I have replaced all of the back of this piece um, there's still some things to do and one of the last things is the drawer the drawer stoppers which um, cause the drawer to stop at a certain point at the back so and also drawer there's little plastic sliders you can put along the sides of each drawer to help it to slide in really nicely and those are going to go into yet yeah. so there's a little bit more work to do on this little thing okay I'm just going to stick these back down here for now so that they are tight and they don't want to fall off on me and I know we're going a little long here but you can watch this on the replay and you can fast forward it all you want but I just wanted to show you how this goes and basically how to do a, a larger transfer with a lot of uh, detail to it because they're not like doing a small little transfer which goes on really fast and really easy. They take a lot of effort. So, um, I've done ones with a lot of lettering on them and a lot of tiny flowers and a lot of leaves. <laughs> Each one is really unique and really different, but it's all the same kind of process, really. Okay, a little closer. Okay. Okay, so I've given that a good rub. And let's see what we can get off here. Uh, not much. Some bits just don't want to come off easily, I tell you. It's like, you're surprised at what does come off easily, and then other parts just don't want to budge. And I don't know if it's heat or what it is that makes it easier, but trying. I'm going to move this around a little bit more. Make my road here. sudden it comes off in a big wad. Not weird. Like the tiniest little piece will stick and then all of a sudden it comes off in a big huge piece. <laughs> this piece on rollers because um, it's easy to maneuver and stuff but having it on rollers right now is not ideal. It keeps wanting to move on me. I've 
seen people, like I said, take the drawers out and do it, you know, with all the drawers out. But honestly, you have to apply so much pressure that I don't think, I don't know how they do it um, and have everything, you know, line up nicely and whatnot. I would advise just doing it with the drawers in. It seems to be, seems to work for me. Craziness. These stems, these dark stems here are really not wanting to come off easily. It seems like the paint for the um, application is so thick there. I'm going to see if I can pull this drawer out and get rid of that rattle. I can't find the drawer holes. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. You can see between prepping a piece, painting a piece, um, doing one of these, redoing the handles, shopping for new handles if you need one, <laughs> uh, or if you need new handles, which I've done on quite a lot of my pieces. Is I, I do replace um, a lot of the handles that might have come to me mismatched on a piece like this one had. This one had. Um, crystal knobs there and brass knobs here so a total mismatch and I'm I want to keep the old brass knobs I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with everything yet but I think I'm going to do my knobs in a silver silver and black maybe because um, I want it to kind of blend into the piece I don't want it to have the knobs and the handles standing out like you know I want them to just kind of be, to melt into the picture itself. So. Every once in a while, there's the tiniest little piece of stuff that comes up and you want to really dig those in and get rid of them. Like there's one right there. This does not want to stick. And one down here too. Okay, so we are getting there. Um, pretty close. trying to remove this plastic um, you just kind of turn it every which way and, and see where it wants to to let loose from the actual picture I'm just getting rid of some of the bulk 
that I'm dealing with there. And I'm going to turn this here again. Can you see very well? I think we're at this end. Right here is where we're at. Okay, almost there. We have just this little bit, so. All right. Almost. I think that's it. I don't know if there's any behind there. Yep, there was one flower. <laughs> one little teeny flower. Okay. Wow, that was a lot of work. I still have a tiny little bit down here to do. So I'm going to take my fingernail and press this in as good as I can. One day I'm going to create a doodad for putting these on on these rails because <laughs> they'll kind of wear out your fingernails when you do this. Okay, that's there. Now yeah, we'll go in here. I wanted to put this last roll on here because it has this lettering on it that I think is pretty neat down here. So I'm hoping I can get it to stick well to get all that lettering on these things. These types of old dressers too, I think are, you know, with Christmas coming up, I think they're just, they would be such a beautiful Christmas gift to the family. Um, this piece could be used as a dresser or it could be used as an entryway table because it's or uh, an entryway cabinet because it does have a mirror um, so it would be like having the cabinet um, that you would put in an entryway anyway with the mirror and everything and the drawers uh, I think it would be pretty nice as an entryway cabinet um, if you had a bathroom that you were doing, renovating, you could do one like this uh, for the bathroom. And then you would just seal this with a poly polycrylic top coat of some kind or Fusion Mineral Paint has a top coat. But I, don't, I wouldn't use their top coat on this dark surface because it tends to streak. But I use Wipe on Poly, um, the Verithane Wipe on Poly quite a bit for dark, a dark sealant on um dark wood, dark paint, and it seems to work really, really well. It's kind of my go-to sealant, and it protects. Polycrylic is actually a plastic. I um, I was showing a guy that's kind of apprenticing with us a little bit. He um, was wondering what polycrylic did, so I put some in a little container and I let it sit for a couple of days. And I literally could pull it out like a sheet of plastic. And I said, this is what polycrylic does to your piece when you put it on a piece, is it protects it just like this, this here. And I showed him the piece of plastic and he was really surprised. But polycrylic is um, a plastic top coat. It goes on really easily and it really protects your piece. Fusion Mineral Paints Tough Coat is very good. And I believe Dixie Bell has a top coat as well that I would recommend one of either one of those 
um, company. Okay, I think we've got it. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. Oh, there's, see, there's a few pieces that didn't stick. So I'm going to press those back down, make sure I get them. And, okay, oh, there's another one that didn't stick right here. Nah. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to press with my fingers, smooth it all, make sure it's all stuck down, like there, where it didn't want to stick, all along the top. And then I'm going to take my buffing pad and just press it in and smooth it out with it so that it's perfectly situated. You can even use the back of your buffing pad if you want to, um, which is super soft to make sure it's all in. But I like I like just to use the, the actual buffing side of it and make sure it's all pressed in. Now, I have to find my my drawer holes here. So I'm feeling for them. There's one there and one there. And then over here, there's a couple. Should be directly across. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay, so like I said, I need to get my drawer strop drawer stoppers in the back so that when these drawers are closed properly, they close exactly like that and they're not going too far in or too far out. Okay, I'm gonna back this up and I'm gonna put my knife away so I don't hurt myself and I'll show you what it looks like. So again, uh, just in case you're just popping in, this is a custom blend of black, um, midnight blue, fusion mineral paints, cold black, midnight blue. Um, there is seaside and then a Dixie Belle color also called antebellum blue that I've blended. So I've put a black outline, blue, um, seaside antebellum blue and then I've just blended it on each part so this is what it looks like now with the stencil on the whole piece I'm gonna try and take this off so you can see it better and I'm hoping I don't hang up on myself but so that's it now um, on these legs here I've done you can see a little bit of the black I've left it kind of streaky and moody and just and I wanted it to look like a, a midnight garden um, because this transfer is called midnight garden but isn't that pretty so I'm gonna finish this up and I will put a I'm going to wax these drawers with just clear wax um, just to seal the drawers in really nicely get the hardware on, put another coat of stain on the top and fix that mirror up there. And this is the side. So I went a little bit heavier with the black and blues and green, the green on this side. And then I wanted it to have this really uneven blended look. So I'm not sure if that's picking up well on the camera, but it has a really uneven blended look to it. And it's just a really moody dark blue and that's the front of it again so that is the midnight garden um, uh, rub on transfer it's an IOD transfer and I think it turned out pretty good so watch the next week I'll probably have the mirror done and all of the the whole thing done and I'll show the before and after pictures when it's completely done so thanks for joining me guys sorry it was a little bit long but I hope it was helpful Take care and have a really good Christmas. Bye-bye.